Hey everybody, it is Wednesday, February the 24th, and this is my midweek check-in. We've just finished the very first week of Lent. We started last week on Ash Wednesday, and today we begin officially the second week of Lent. For this time of reflection today, I'm going to read from a book called Reflections for Lent that I've had a long time by Joyce Huguet. And this particular reflection is called A Time to Come Back. Lent is a glorious 40-day retreat. A retreat is a time to stand back to ask, what have I been doing with my life? What has God been teaching me? Where have I succeeded in living life God's way? Where have I failed? What do I need to confess to God or to change? A Lenten retreat is a time to recognize our wanderings and to determine to heed God's call to come back. Joel 2 verses 12 and 13 says, But now, now it is the Lord who speaks. Come back to me with all your heart. Turn to the Lord your God again, for he is all tenderness and compassion, slow to anger rich in graciousness. Like the young man in the story of the prodigal son, Lord Jesus, I make a calculated choice to come back to the Father. That's a beautiful way to think about Lent. You know that story of the prodigal son, the son who who ran off, he just, he wanted his, his share of the father's estate even before his father had died. His father gave it to him and he went off and squandered it away and then he basically came crawling back said to his dad i'm willing to be a slave here just so i can come back but his dad uh, this is from luke 15 he was still a long way from home when his father saw him in other words his father was watching for him his heart was filled with pity and he ran the father threw his arms around his son and kissed him hurry he said Bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet. Let us celebrate with a feast. This is how God celebrates when we come back to him, when we turn back around from the direction that we've been going, perhaps that's been away from God, and return coming towards him, that God runs to us with open arms and receives us and celebrates our homecoming. On this one page, it says, You are our peace, O Lord, from the thousand wearinesses of our daily life. Boy, that's so true right now, isn't it? From the thousand wearinesses of our daily life, from the disappointments, from the nervous and senseless haste, we turn to you and are at peace. The clamor dies. We are alive in the sunshine of your presence. Even so, Lord Jesus, come to this soul of mine. And that just brings up something that I've been thinking a lot about. I think with this past year, there are many of us who have a lot of disappointments that have been piling up inside. And just because we're Christians doesn't mean that we're not going to have things that we feel disappointed about. There are not, it, just because we're Christians doesn't mean that we aren't going to be having times that are um, struggling times. In fact, when we're following Jesus, we are, we are committed to times of suffering, finding it true joy when we can suffer um, as Christ suffered for us. And we don't mean that in a masochistic way, but, but it is an honor to suffer or to be persecuted because of our faith in Jesus. It's not for just suffering's sake. It is for the sake of our faith in Jesus. So one of the practices that I, I need to do I confess to you, I haven't done it yet, but I need to do it. 
um, that has been suggested is that we find time, find 10 to 15 minutes alone, quiet. Moms, you might need to go in the bathroom, shut the door or hide in your closet, I don't know. Um, but find some quiet time and just write down all of the things that you feel disappointed about that have happened. You can do in your whole life or maybe just in this past year. Just get them all out. Instead of letting them just continue to pile up inside, just write them all down. Get them all out. And it's, it's so much healthier to do this this way instead of just going to a friend and complaining to a friend about all the things you're disappointed about because the friend has their own things that they're disappointed about and the next thing you know you're just having a, a complaining party and that's really not usually helpful for for anybody in terms of moving forward you can bring to god that list then that you just write it all down and then you just bring this list of disappointments to god i mean when you read the psalms that's what the psalmists were doing they were bringing their complaints they were bringing their disappointments to the lord and that's okay he knows that we are disappointed in these things anyway, but the act of, of bringing them to him, releasing them to him, I think, and I hope, will take us to a new place in our returning to the Lord. I think part of it is um, just that whole why question why me, why now, why my kids, why this year, whatever. And I have suggested in the past that instead of the why that we say, that our question is, is, is how? How do you want me to get through this time? How do you want me to lead my family through this time? But another question as, uh, instead of the how is the what now? Okay, Lord, here, here you go. Here are all my disappointments. Now, what now? Where are we where are you where are we headed now? What do you want to do now, Lord? And I think that this question helps us to grow in faith because it opens our our hands to the Lord saying, "Okay, what now?" Yes, I've had all these disappointments. But what now? How do you want me to move on from here? So I offer that to you as a Lenten practice. And I am making a, I am making a promise to you that in this next week, I'm going to do this. This is something I've been meaning to do. I, like all of you, have a lot of disappointments from this last year. And so I'm going to I'm going to find those minutes off by myself and I'm going to write down these disappointments. And I trust that it will release some things in me as I trust that doing this exercise will release some things in you. And I hope and pray take us to a more peaceful place in our walk of faith with the Lord. Let's pray together. Thank you Father for how you care for us. Thank you that you created all of humanity in your image, giving us a value and a dignity that can never be taken away. Forgive us for not bringing all that we are and all that we're thinking and feeling, even the what we would call the negative emotions Forgive us for not bringing all these things, all these things to you. you. You call us to bring it all to you. And that in the doing of that, that then there will be peace. So I pray for myself that you will help me to do this more regularly. And I pray for all my friends who are listening that you would help them as well. 
and for our own sake, yes, so that we can be more filled with peace and joy that comes from, from knowing you and following you and worshiping you and, and loving you. And yes, it is for our sake, but, but ultimately it's for your sake. Because then in our lives being lived out in that peaceful way, you, Lord, are honored. You are lifted up. You are exalted as the one who is the true healer of our minds and our souls. Lord, would you help us to, to keep our eyes open, to see the ways that you are working around us, in and through us. May we be faithful in this next week to take intentional steps toward you. Intentional steps toward you so that our faith might be growing ever stronger as we move together through this season of Lent. For those who are struggling and suffering, Lord, help them. Strengthen them, give them courage, give them hope beyond what they can see. All this we pray together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Folks, if you have need of any kind, if you need help just figuring out how to take steps towards the Lord, all you have to do is reach out in whatever way is most comfortable for you. Take care, everyone. Amen.